This is part three of the three-part video series. If you haven't watched the first two videos, please watch. We discuss what urinary tract infection or UTI or Balisal Sao is, acute uncomplicated cystitis and its symptoms, risks, and prevention. The third part is about treatment protocols. It's now time to find out what the best available treatment is. With me today is multi-awarded and leading expert on neurological infectious diseases from Munich, Germany, Dr. Kurt Naber. He has authored over 700 scientific articles and medical textbooks and serves as the editorial boards of several scientific journals. He is Associate Professor of Urology at the Technical University of Munich School of Medicine and will talk about the international guidelines for treatment for acute uncomplicated cystitis. Dr. Naber, what is the best recommended treatment for acute uncomplicated cystitis? We had a symposium several hours discussing just the question and you see it's not so easy but we came to the following conclusion that we cannot just uh, use the old guidelines again. We have to think about new guidelines because of uh, the problem of resistance, which is a problem all over the world. And in the new guidelines, interestingly, we decided to use the old antibiotics. And this is a clue. We have to go back to old antibiotics, which have not shown to become resistant or uh, bacteria become resistant against these old antibiotics. And therefore, it's interesting, the new antibiotics will include mainly old antibiotics for the treatment of acute uncomplicated cystitis. Okay, so what is the scientific basis of this treatment guidelines and how do doctors uh, follow them? Uh, the scientific basis are always uh, in vitro studies concerning uh, resistance and clinical studies and uh, we have used uh, fluoroquinolones for many years and uh, cotrimoxazole for many years but now in most of the countries the resistant went up and now f we recommend for the uh, treatment of acute uncomplicated cystitis old drugs like phosphomycin trometamol like nitroforantuin in some countries, we also have pifmetzilinam or even nitroxoline, which is a very old drug from 1962. This is a clue that we go back to old drugs in new guidelines. Yes, but it seems like the global bacterial is getting stronger. So tell us more about the global resistance, the global bacterial resistance. Yeah, uh, probably because there was an overuse of antibiotics, especially fluoroquinolones, the doctors uh, use this uh, uh, antibiotics for too many indications and uh, maybe not only the medical use but also the use in animals has driven the resistance uh, very high in some countries it's even 50 percent uh, e coli are resistant against fluoroquinolones and so we cannot use them anymore for empiric therapy. The same is true for cotrimoxazole. These were the two standard drugs in the past. Yes, so now that we have this treatment, is this a recommended treatment for applicable to our local setting here in the Philippines? I have, uh, during the symposium, we discussed not only the international guidelines, we also discussed the guidelines which are now uh, endorsed in the Philippines. And for me, it was really interesting to see that uh, the Philippine guidelines are very much in uh, congruent, are very much following the international guidelines. Even I have to say that uh, uh, the IDSA guidelines, these are the American and ESCMID guidelines, European guidelines, they are from 1911 and they should be updated because there's still cotrimoxazole in first line. I think it should go out from the first line. That's a really good, nice to know that that's happening in the Philippines right now. Yeah. So in your clinical practice, what is the importance of the patient to be compliant? If you have several options of treatment, then of course for the patient it is uh, very 
important that uh, the usage of the antibiotic should be simple not more than once a day or maximum twice a day and uh, for the treatment of acute cystitis short-term therapy is recommended and for some drugs for example for nitrofurantoin you according to the guidelines you have to uh, go for five days for phosphomycin trometamol one single dose is good enough you don't need a second dose however you should say the patient that if you take one single dose the still there might be some uh, symptoms for two or three days and this you have to say because the bacteria are eliminated however the reduction of the inflammation takes a little bit longer so tell us the main differences of the treatment options for acute uncomplicated cystitis the main differences uh, between old and new guidelines i mentioned already that the standard drugs that is the fluoroquinolones and cotrimoxazole should not be first line drugs for treatment of acute cystitis anymore However, now we should switch to phosphomycin trometamol, nitrofurantoin, for example, and depending on the country, pifmetzilinam or nitroxylin. And here again, we have to look uh, that it must be convenient for the patient. Single dose is very convenient, of course, for the patient. It should not be longer than th three days, I guess, the treatment. You know, with the advancement of medicine, this is really like what they call a wonder drug. Would you say that? I mean, considering with just one dosage, it will sort of cure the treatment. Uh, it is very practical for the patient. And I think uh, with this regimen, he will have a, a very good compliance. But as I mentioned before, some patients uh, are not patient. They are not patient <laughs> enough. They are not patient enough. They, because uh, the symptoms can stay longer and the symptoms and bacterial eradication are two different things. Thank you so much, Dr. Naber. It's like been wonderful. Thank you for all this, this advancement of medicine and all your information. Thank you so much.